In the previous lecture, we dynamically inserted the contents on the main page. So there they are right here, including the menu special and the map tiles. In this lecture, we would like to dynamically insert the menu categories when the user clicks on the menu tile. And actually, I already have this implemented, so let's take a look as to what happens. When I click on this button, I see that the menu categories come up with all the pictures, and these things are also clickable. So very similar to before, except now we actually have all the pictures for the right categories, as opposed to just placeholders. So these are dynamically being filled in. Obviously, at this point, we need the data to fill up this, these menu categories and also to point to these pictures that are specific to each category. So how do we do that? First of all, how do we get the data? Well, there's an app that we've deployed on HirokoApp.com. And the app is called davids-restaurant.herokoapp.com slash whatever. And basically what that is, is a REST API that provides us JSON data that we need for our application. And even though the actual website is going to be hosted on GitHub pages, so it's going to be GitHub pages.io or something like that, the data is actually going to sit uh, as this app, as this restaurant, David's Restaurant app on Heroku. And I'm going to have to interrupt this lecture for a little bit of an update. On November 28th, 2022, Heroku is going to discontinue the free tier as one of their offerings, which means that we're no longer going to be able to deploy our applications for 100% free on Heroku.com. Instead, we're going to deploy our data as a REST API using Google Firebase. So update number one is, instead of the herokuapp.com URL that you're seeing on your screen, we're going to use firebase.io.com as our URL for our categories and also for the menu items that we're going to get in a future lecture. So for the correct URL to use, take a look at your screen right now, and I will also document it in the FAQ in the GitHub repository that you have been using up until now. All the code in that GitHub repository has been updated to use the new URL. So if you need a reference, you can always go look at those lectures and the example code that comes with them. So remember, in the future lectures, when you see that I am using davids-restaurant.herokoapp.com slash something, it's actually not the correct URL, and make sure to reference the correct URL that you're seeing on your screen now, that is firebase.io.com. The second update, which might not affect you that much, is that in this lecture, I reference Ruby on Rails web development courses that used to be part of this specialization and part of the five or six courses of this specialization. Unfortunately, none of those courses are available anymore on Coursera.org. However, Coursera delisting those courses does not affect this course and does not affect the AngularJS course that is designed to be a follow-up course to this one. So keep those two things in mind and good luck with the rest of the course. Now this app is actually a Ruby on Rails app. And if you want to learn more about Ruby on Rails and how to create these apps all by yourself, I highly suggest you go to Coursera.org and find the Become a Rails Developer or Ruby on Rails Full Stack Web Application Specialization. And this is really this course right here that you're taking is actually part of that. So if you scroll down, you could see that you could get Ruby on Rails an introduction. You could go to the second course and then we'll dive a little bit deeper into Ruby and Action Pack. And you could get to MongoDB with Ruby on Rails. And this is actually a course that you're taking right now, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript for web developers, that is also part of this specialization. Even though you're not required to know any Ruby on Rails knowledge for this course, we're certainly going to use Ruby on Rails as our backend to get the data. So I would highly encourage you to enroll in this specialization. Now, the fact that this data is hosted on herokoapp.com and our application is hosted, well, locally right now for development purposes, it's being hosted on our browser sync, so it's kind of a local host, or eventually will get hosted on GitHub. The fact that they're hosted on two different domain names is actually a problem. And the reason that is a problem is because every browser comes with this security mechanism that's called same source or same origin rule. And basically what that means is, is if, if you load JavaScript that tries to reach out through Ajax to any other domain name other than the one that this particular HTML page was served from, the browser will stop that activity and will not allow it. 
And the reason it will stop that is because of the following. The browser and the JavaScript that runs in it runs as you, has the same privileges on your computer as you do. And if some remote script was allowed to reach out to other domain names other than the one you actually want to, what it could do, since you're operating behind a firewall and the JavaScript that's executing in the page is also executing behind a firewall because it is your computer after all, if the JavaScript was allowed to reach out to other domain names other than the one it was served from or the HTML page that you went to was served from, it could potentially reach out to internal websites and internal computers that it really shouldn't be able to even see. So therefore, what the browsers do is they enforce the same origin and same source rule. They don't allow that to happen. Now, in that case, how can we ever get this data? The browser is going to stop us. Well, comes this new technology called cores, otherwise known as cross-origin resource sharing. And if you actually go, you could Google for it, cores, Wikipedia page. And you could see this explained to you in some detail how, how this works. Basically, the idea of cores is, is there's going to be some HTTP headers that the browser will know about and will tell the browser that it is actually safe to reach out to this particular domain name. And this is exactly what's going on in the case of this David's Restaurant app. It is actually communicating back to our browser and sending those HTTP headers, telling us that even though you really usually shouldn't be able to reach out with your JavaScript anywhere else, you're allowed to reach out to me and it is a safe thing to do. So that's point number one. That is how we're going to be able to get our data from our server that is going to be hosted somewhere other than Heroku or even just locally through Browser Sync to this Heroku app that is going to grab our data. That's point number one. Point number two is this is kind of hard to read what exactly this JSON is. So one quick trick you could do is you can open the Chrome Developer Tools, and if you go to the Network tab, you can even click All, and if you refresh this page right here, you will see that you will get this categories.json. That's the URL we're interested in. So if you click on that, you could go to the Preview tab, and Chrome Developer Tools will be very happy to actually give you the preview of JSON in a very nicely formatted way, such that you could open up each data item and look inside. So you could see this categories.json is serving us JSON that is really an array of objects. So JSON is an array, this JSON, this particular JSON, uh, string is an array of objects, and you can see here each object has an ID, has a name, short name, special instructions for this particular category. Okay, so now that we know where to get the data and how we're going to get the data, or how at least that's going to be possible, in part two of this lecture, we're going to go ahead and execute the code, the AJAX code, to pull this data, parse the data properly, and generate the dynamic HTML in order to insert it as our main content of our page.